Hello, my name is Moonkat and welcome to my guide for the 10th anniversary event. In this video I will go through all you need to know about this new event, including the mechanics, the rewards, as well as the strategies on how to get the most out of this event, and how to ensure you get the main building fully leveled if you care about that. Now before I go into all of that, Inno Games have given me the opportunity to give away 3000 diamonds to a viewer of my channel, so if you want the chance of winning the 3000 diamonds, leave a comment on this video with your username, your server, and how long you've been playing Forge of Empires. Then this weekend I will be doing a live stream where I will be drawing a winner live at random from the comments. Now there are some restrictions, if you play on one of these servers you can't join I'm afraid, and I don't have any control over that, but if you play on any other server, including beta, you can join. So leave a comment and stay tuned for the live stream this weekend. You don't have to subscribe or like this video or anything like that, but if you do enjoy this, consider doing it anyways. Alright, now let's move on to the event itself. And before I go into the event mechanics, let me first talk a little bit about the event rewards. First of all, we have the main building, the new golden ovary, and sorry for butchering that pronunciation. This building is 4x5, so relatively small compared to other event buildings. It has 10 levels, and at max level it gives 10 previous era goods, it gives 10 forge points, and it gives between 11 and 27% defense boost for your attacking army, depending on your age. Now in addition to this, it also gives some item fragments. It has a 45% chance of giving 10 fragments of the 30 minute supply rush kit, it has a 35% chance of giving 5 fragments of the large attack boost, and it has a 20% chance of giving 2 fragments of the 1-up kit. And for all of these kits, you need 30 fragments to get the full item. So that's the stats, and in my opinion, this is a very decent building. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's definitely not bad, and I would definitely get this in your uh, city. Now, moving on to daily specials. We have a new building, the Stage of Ages. This building here, it has one level, it is 4x4, four four. it does require a road, and it gives between 7 and 19% attack boost, it gives 4 forge points, and 15 previous age goods. And that is really good. Uh, the attack amount is very comparable to other buildings like the Checkmate Square. In the highest ages, this gives actually slightly more per tile than the Checkmate Square, and Botanical Rotunda and so on. Uh, but in lower ages, the Checkmate Square does give a little bit more per tile. Uh, but this new building, Stage of Ages, gives a lot more uh, per daily specials. So up to 19 per daily special if you are in the latest age, compared to 11 for the Checkmate Square. Uh, and in addition to that, you also get the Forge Points and Goods. Especially the Forge Points uh, 4, it's not an amazing amount for the building, that's the same as the uh, Trinal Knowledge, for example, but in addition to the attack, makes this a very nice building. Uh, and again, you get a lot per daily special per uh, one of these, uh, so 4 Forge Points for each of these makes it a really good building <laughs> to get a lot of Forge Points quickly as well. So overall, this is a really good building and definitely worth building. Uh, now some other options, you have uh, <laughs> the classics uh, Checkmate Square, Botanical Rotunda and Royal Marble Gateway. All of these are very good, roughly around one attack per tile in the highest ages. Uh, so all of these are good options, uh, but I do think for pretty much everyone, the Stage of Ages will be better than all of these, even though these have slightly higher attack efficiency in lower ages compared to the Stage of Ages. I think the Forge Points more than make up for the difference, uh, so yeah, I would go for this probably for attack, or you can go for the Cherry Garden set, the Spring set. <laughs> I am definitely going for this, I'm sure a lot of you know that I love this set, uh, and when it comes to attack efficiency, uh, this is actually the best out of all of these options. Uh, it even beats uh, the Stage of Ages in the highest ages, if you have enough pieces, but even if you don't have a lot of pieces, uh, especially in lower ages, this is a really good set to get. And the main reason for that is that the attack doesn't scale with age. All of these items here scale with age, uh, so this one between 2 and 7, this one between 3 and 10 for example, uh, 5 and 10, uh, but 
the spring set, and specifically the Sakura Rock, which is the one that gives attack, does not scale with age. It always gives 10 when it is connected to enough pieces. So that makes this a very good uh, building, a very good set to get early on in early ages. So if, for example, you are quite new, uh, or if you are camping in a lower age, this will be the most efficient attack building to get. And if you need some help uh, with the designs, I have quite a few videos from previous years, so do check those out. Uh, but yeah, in terms of attack efficiency, especially in lower ages, the Cherry Garden is the best. With that said, I do still think the Stage of Ages is a good option, possibly even the best option in lower ages. Uh, because even though the attack value is not that great in lower ages, uh, the additional forge points can come in very handy. Uh, and also you get a lot more attack per daily special if you care about that. So I would say that it, my recommendation for attack is either the Stage of Ages or the Cherry Garden set. Uh, and of course, you have the Sentinel Outpost, so if you want defense for your attacking army instead of attack, you should definitely go for the Sentinel Outpost uh, that is returning in this event. All right. Uh, when it comes to forge points, uh, here again you have the Stage of Ages, and it's good for all the reasons I already listed. Uh, it gives a lot per daily special, uh, but if you want a more efficient building, uh, this one relatively inefficient when it comes to forge point, uh, then the Sushin Mill, for example, is probably the best option. Uh, this one gives over two times the amount of forge points per tile compared to the Stage of Ages, but I do still think the Stage of Ages is better for most people, simply because it also gives attack and some uh, some goods, although this also gives goods. Uh, so yeah, uh, this one gives uh, the Stage of Ages, gives most per daily special, also gives the attack, but if you care about forge points per tile, you should go for the Sushin Mill. Uh, the Mikawa Bridge, uh, Hanami Bridge, probably a little bit too outdated, uh, so yeah, I would go for one of these two buildings. And then finally, we have some situational items. So the Rogue Hideout and Rogue Hideout Shrink Kit ret returns this year, uh, as it does in most events. You have the Reno Kit, and you also have the Store Building Kit. So if you need any of those, you can pick those up. Uh, but uh, at least on beta, the Wishing Well and the Wishing Well Shrink Kit was not available as a daily special. There are still a few ways, or one way to get uh, Wishing Wells and Wishing Well Shrink Kits, and I will mention that a little bit later on. Uh, but you will probably not get them as daily specials. All right, that's the rewards. Uh, before I go into the mechanics, let me quickly mention this quest cheat list I have. Uh, this is uh, not a full list, a complete list of quests, but these are the ones that uh, I think most people need to plan ahead for. So all the production quests, uh, collecting some incense or the antique dealer, for example, uh, building some buildings, uh, making people enthusiastic and all of that. So these are the ones that you might need to plan ahead for. Uh, you can find a complete list here on the wiki page. Uh, this is always a very nice resource to have, the wiki page, so I would definitely recommend keeping an eye on that as well if you want to look at all the other requests. Uh, and yeah. Um, now one quick note is that on beta they did announce that there were a few changes or that they decreased the difficulty for some of these quests. Uh, I don't know exactly what that means, uh, if that is simply tweaking numbers, or if that means uh, changing some of the quests, I don't know. Uh, but this is, a, a, this is how it was on beta, at least. So there might be some changes, but probably not any uh, important ones. All right, now let's move on to the minigame and event mechanics. Now, the minigame itself is fairly straightforward, it's not complicated at all, at least not compared to the St. Patrick's Day event. So all you really have to do is roll some dice and move ahead on the board. So this is your player here, this number five here, and you start here on this tile here, number one, and to move ahead to progress through the board, you have to roll the dice, which costs 100 paper money, which is the event currency that you get from quests and so on. Now, when you roll a dice, you will move between one and six tiles, and when you land on a tile, you will get a reward from that tile. And as you can see, you have a few different types of rewards. You have all of these chests here, which include a chance of getting the daily special, among various other rewards as resources, units, uh, buildings, and all of that. These are the normal chests that we know from most events, and from these, you have a chance of getting the daily special. Uh, then you also have these buildings here. Uh, these are uh, event buildings from 
mostly from a few, few years ago. Uh, you don't have any special ones in this screenshot, uh, but you do have a few interesting ones. So you can get the Royal Marble Gateway, for example, which is nice for attack. And here you can get the Wishing Well and Wishing Well Shrink Kit, so that's interesting. You also have the Piazza Kit, if you care about that. And we have the Champion Retreat and a few other buildings as well, so definitely a few that might be interesting. And of course, all of these buildings can be sold to the Antiques Dealer quite nicely. So, in addition to the uh, chests and the buildings, you also have these resource tiles here. Uh, these are things like coins, uh, supplies, you don't see that here, uh, metal, metals and so on. Uh, not really that interesting in my opinion. And then finally, you have this one here, the Avatar. So if you care about avatars, here you can pick up some avatars from previous uh, events, uh, some that might be interesting to you. I don't care about that, but if you do, that is one thing you can get. Now, uh, in addition to all of these uh, normal tiles, you see you have four corner tiles here. So this first one here, already mentioned, is the start. And each time you pass this uh, start here, you get one grand prize, and you also move up one age on this board. Now, moving up an age doesn't really change much. It increases the amount of resources you get, but nothing else really. So, uh, you shouldn't really pay attention to which age you're in. Uh, but yeah, when you pass, you do get another grand prize. And as you can see, you get a grand prize every other... Uh, or a, a selection, an upgrade kit for the main building every other grand prize. Now, then we have this corner here. The first time you land on it on a day, you will get a golden dice. Then every subsequent time you land on it on that day, you will get 125 paper money, the event currency, instead. So each day you have a chance of getting one uh, golden dice from this uh, tile here, and then any other times you land on it on that day, you get paper money instead. And then down here you have a boost to the daily special. So when you land here, you have a 5% additional chance of getting a daily special when you land on the chest for the next five hours. Uh, this does not stack, uh, but if you land on it again, the timer will reset, so you get another five hours. Uh, though, you know, you really want to do, when you land on it, you want to spend your currency <laughs> immediately, so that doesn't really matter. And then finally, we have this chest here, which has a chance of giving uh, the either the Grand Queen or the Grand King selection kit. Uh, these are two new building, or one new building set. It has two buildings, uh, both are three by three, and they both have two levels. And at max level, these give some forge points, so five forge points for the Grand King, and three forge points for the Grand Queen, when they are connected, so they do need to be connected to get these forge points, and each of them also give 5% attack boost. Uh, now, these are nice, of course, but they are not good numbers. Uh, they are all right. If you get these buildings and you have the space, by all means place them, but I would not go out of my way to get them. I would not focus on getting them because I don't think they are worth uh, worrying about or trying to get. And another reason why I wouldn't really try to go for them is that, as you can see, you only have a 50% chance of getting it. So that means that you probably have a small chance of landing on it in the first place, uh, and yeah, when you land on it, you're not guaranteed to get it either. So, if you get them, nice, perhaps build them, but I wouldn't focus or try to get them. Alright, uh, then we also have this small thing here, uh, which is the daily goal. Uh, so, this will be placed a few tiles ahead of you each day, and when you pass it, you don't have to land on it, so when you pass it, you get this daily reward chest. And that chest contains, uh, or has a chance of giving the daily special, 20% chance, it has a 40% chance of giving 100 paper money, and it has another 40% chance of giving 20 forge points. So this is a way to get a few additional paper money, and that will be important later on, and you also have some chance of getting the daily special. Uh, now one final thing, you have this dice here, the golden dice. This is a joker dice that you can choose the number. So when you click on it, you can choose which number you want, and that is useful to ensure that you land on a tile you want. So, as I'll go over later on, for example, you want to land on this when you go for or when you spend a lot of currency so that you get a lot of daily specials. So when you do that, you want to use a golden dice to land on this, for example. 
Another strategy is to use a golden dice to land on this golden dice, essentially spending a golden dice to get, get it back again and move ahead a few tiles. Uh, but yeah, I'll go over that in a moment. And that's basically it for the mechanics. It's fairly simple, and you don't really have to think about too much. With that said, you do still have some choices to make when it comes to getting the main building, the Golden Orrery, fully leveled. So let's go over that a little bit. Uh, first of all, uh, when it comes to the currency you can get, you can get just above 9,000 paper money for free, uh, and you can get six golden dice for free. You get one golden dice for every milestone quest. So uh, for each milestone quest, instead of getting paper money from the uh, quest reward, you get one golden dice instead. And you do start with one as well. So six in total. All right, now let's talk about or get into event strategies. And let's first talk about how easy it is to get, or is it easy to get the golden orrery fully leveled? So to get it fully leveled, you need 10 levels. You get three from the milestones. As you can see here, you get the level one building and you get two upgrade kits. If you have the event surprise box, that is another uh, upgrade or selection kit. So that means you need another six or seven from the grand prizes. And as I went over, you get one every other grand prize. So that means you need either 11 or 13 grand prizes, depending on if you have the surprise box or not. And to get those grand prizes, you need to move ahead 352 tiles or 416 tiles. Again, depending on if you have the event surprise box or not. Now, if you simply look at average numbers, on average, you move ahead three and a half tiles per dice roll. Uh, and if we include the golden dice, and if we assume for now that you do six tiles with each of them, uh, that means that you need around 91 dice rolls to get the uh, main building fully leveled if you have the surprise box, which is around 9,100 paper money. So you might think, all right, that's good. That's what I started with. Seems <laughs> well balanced, but sadly not. Now, because you can get between one and six tiles progress towards the grand prize with each dice roll, there is a lot of variance and luck plays a really big role. So a better way to look at it is to look at the distribution of how far you will get and here I've used uh, 9,100 paper money and six golden dice at six tiles each. So with those, this is the distribution of how many tiles you will progress. And this blue line here is how many you need to get the main building fully leveled if you have the event surprise box. So this means that all of this above here has enough upgrade kits to get it fully leveled if they have the surprise box, uh, which is you know, a decent chunk of the uh, players. Uh, but you also have quite a big portion that is below. Uh, so again, luck will play a big uh, part in this, uh, but especially if you don't have the surprise box, this is how far you need to land. And as you can see, you are nowhere close to that with those 9,100 paper money. So this means that if you care about getting the uh, orrery fully leveled, you do need to make some choices because there are a few ways to get more paper money uh, and also more golden dice. So let's go over that and let's see how that impacts everything. So there are three ways of getting extra resources. Uh, the first one, quite obvious, is incidents. Uh, this time we have some special looking incidents, uh, similar to what we have in a few other events. Uh, so that's nice. And when you click on those, you will get between five and 100 paper money. So over the event, you should be able to get quite a lot, uh, probably between 500 and 1,000 paper money, possibly even more. So you should be able to get quite a lot from uh, incidents, and you definitely should pick those up. Uh, then you also have the daily goal. As I mentioned, here we have a 40% chance of getting 100 paper money. So essentially, for each daily goal you get, you get on average 40 paper money. And in total, you can get up to 21 daily goals, which means you can get a bit over 800 additional paper money on average from daily goals as well. So that is another source. Uh, but of course, if you do go for daily goals, you will have less to spend on the day or the days where the daily specials you want are active. So that's something you have to consider and something I'll talk a little bit more about in a moment. And then the final way to get additional uh, currency or additional uh, golden dice is by strategically using golden dice to land on this tile here, on this tile here. 
And the way you do that is by using the free golden dice you have when you are close to this tile here. So when you are within six tiles of it, you can use this free golden dice and you will land back here on the, this golden dice. So you're not actually using a golden dice, you get it right back again, but you have moved ahead a couple of steps. On average, three and a half tiles. So basically you get three and a half tiles or three and a half free tiles each time you pass this corner here. However, as I mentioned, you can only get one golden dice per day. So that means that if you're going for something like this, then you do have to spend your event currency across at least uh, 11 or 13 days. And the reason I say 11 or 13 is that, as I mentioned, to get enough upgrade kits, you will have to go through the board 11 or 13 times. So that means that each of those 11 or 13 times, you can pick up one golden dice. But again, to do that, you do have to spend across uh, 11 or 13 days. And uh, now if you do that, you will get between uh, 35 and 45 or up to 35 to 45 additional tiles. And that can definitely help you get further and pick up more grand prizes. So if we combine all of this, so uh, here I just used 760 incidents, so somewhere in between 840 from daily goals, so around 1600 additional paper money, uh, and another 40 additional tiles by going for the golden dice across uh, 11, 12, or 13 days. If we include all of this, here we have a new distribution, and here we can see that everybody <laughs> pretty much guaranteed to get it if they have the surprise box. If you do not have the surprise box, you have a very decent chance of getting enough uh, progress, uh, enough tiles to get the fully leveled uh, orrery, golden orrery. So if you care about getting it fully leveled, these are the ways you can impact that. And of course, you don't have to do it as extreme as this. Uh, so you don't have to go for the daily goal every day. You can do it across, I don't know, 10 days, for example, or five days. Just get some more uh, paper money here. You don't have to do it every day. Uh, and likewise here, uh, you don't have to get the golden dice uh, every, every time you do it. You can do it, I don't know, four times, five times. Uh, so you don't have to take these to the extreme, uh, but these are ways you can improve your chance of getting the golden orrery fully leveled. All right, now, if you don't care about that at all, if you would rather focus on daily specials, uh, or if you uh, do care about the orrery, but would still like to focus on daily special, and perhaps instead use a few diamonds to make up for it if you, if you need to, uh, then the event is very simple for you. Basically, all you need to do is save up all your currency for one or two, perhaps even three days, and on those days, uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure you land on the 5% uh, boost for daily specials, but beyond that, you simply roll the dice and hope you land on a chest. So how do you get to this tile here most efficiently? Uh, well, you need to use, or you should use, a golden dice to land on this tile here the first chance you get. So if your player is in one of these tiles here, uh, I would use a golden dice directly, move it to the corner. Now, if you are on this side here of the uh, this boost here, then what you can do is that when you get to this region here, you can use a golden dice to land on this corner here, to pick up that golden dice, and then from there, use it again to get this corner. Uh, so those are the kind of the two ways to, go, to get this corner. But basically, the first chance you have of using a golden dice to get here, you should do so. That will give you a 5% boost. And beyond that, you simply roll the dice as many times as possible to get as many chests as possible. Now, if you plan on spending all your currency or on one or two days, uh, as I mentioned, you do have a few free golden dice. So here you have two choices. You can either use those golden dice to go for either a chest, a rare chest, or a building you are interested in, or you can use them to get some additional event currency, some paper money, by landing on this tile here. So again, as I mentioned, first time you land here, you will get a golden dice, but after that, you will always get some paper money until the next day. So you can use this uh, to either land on this tile to get some more paper money, or to land on rare chests or buildings. Now, if you land on rare chests or use it to get to rare chests, you will get a few more, or you will get slightly more daily specials. We're not talking a big difference, something like, I think it was 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 more daily specials, uh, but you will move or progress a few fewer tiles 
uh, through the board. So if you want to get a few more tiles instead, you should use the golden dice to pick up additional currency. Now there is the one thing I haven't mentioned yet, and this kind of leads me into how many daily specials you can expect. Uh, that is that each of these uh, tiles here has a certain type of reward. And this type does not change before the next day. So at midnight, all of these tiles refresh, they will get a new uh, reward type. But after that, it will keep that reward type throughout the entire uh, day. So that means that if you land here, you will pick up this chest. But when you roll again, this will be replaced with another chest. It will never be replaced with resources or buildings or anything like that. It will always be the same type. Uh, and at each midnight, when this refreshes, the number of chests you have on the board is not the same. So if you are lucky, you might get uh, more chests on one day uh, than on other days. Uh, and yeah, if you're lucky, <laughs> that day is when a daily special you want is active. But if you're unlucky, you will get it when a daily special you don't care about. Uh, or you will get fewer chests when the daily special you care about is active. So that is one thing that impacts how many daily specials you will get. Another thing that impacts how ma many daily specials you will get is, of course, how much paper money you save for the days where you go all out. So how many daily specials can you expect to get if you go all out for daily specials with this boost? somewhere between 10 and 12 daily specials on average. Uh, but this is on average. As you can see, there is quite a big spread here. Uh, you might be unlucky and only get five, six, or you might get really lucky and get, I don't know, 17, 18, perhaps even 26. Seems like some of my simulations got very, very lucky indeed. But yeah, you will probably get somewhere between, I don't know, six and 16, somewhere in that region. Uh, now here I also have some screenshots kind of illustrating one of the downsides uh, by uh, going for some of these methods here to get more uh, more event currency, the daily goals and so on. By doing that you do spend uh, currency when daily specials you don't care about are active and that means that you will have less to spend when daily specials you want are active. So if for example you only have half the event currency for daily specials uh, or the daily specials you want, you will get less of the daily specials you care about. The total number of daily specials will not be that different, but you will get more random daily specials that you probably don't care too much about. One final thing I want to talk about is diamond spending, for those who care about that. Uh, this event is a little bit difficult to uh, tell because there is quite a lot of variance, uh, but on average uh, the cost for uh, or per daily special and also cost per grand price is roughly 900 paper money. I've converted to diamonds, that is around 1,500 diamonds per daily special, as well as per grand prize. Uh, now you need two grand prize for every golden or every set uh, or upgrade, so that means that you need 20 of those or around 30,000 diamonds for a full additional golden orrery. So these numbers are not uh, great, so I would probably personally save my diamonds, uh, probably for the wildlife event I would save them for. Uh, so yeah, but if you do want to spend diamonds, uh, I would recommend going for paper money. It is cheaper than going for golden dice, uh, though of course you can if you want to go for a few golden dice as well. But I would spend most of my diamonds on paper money if you are planning to spend uh, diamonds on this event. Alright, one final thing, I have two simulations down here. Uh, this first simulation down uh, here uh, simulates how many or estimates how many daily specials you can get. So it creates this uh, spread, this distri distribution that I showed above. Uh, so here, if I open this in a new page, here we can see the distribution, and this is with 10,000 paper money, so that is around eight 900 from incidents. Uh, this is with 18 chests on the board. Uh, I believe most days you will have somewhere between 16 and 18 chests on the board. And then you also have six golden dice, and here I've used those to get rare chests, as I've mentioned. That is one way you can do it, but here you can change these. Uh, say you I know, buy some more uh, starting uh, paper money, you can increase that. You can increase the golden dice, for example. Let's say you're a little bit less lucky with the chest on the board. And if you, instead of focusing on the rare chest, you focus on... Uh, the uh, on getting paper money, the top corner tile, for example. Set that to true, and then you can run that simulation, and you'll get another number. I, I don't know how this will be, but probably a little bit higher. 
So yeah, they're not, I don't know, 50 and <laughs> average. So you can play around with this if you want. Uh, this next simulation down here is for how many tiles you will progress. Uh, so let's run it real quickly. And here I have, uh, again, how many uh, paper money you have, how many golden dice. Uh, here I also have this daily goal distance. Um, I don't I don't quite know how long this dis distance is. Uh, to me, it seems like it is around 10 tiles per day, but that might not be completely accurate. Uh, but yeah, here you can change those. And what I've done here is that I have three methods of playing uh, the event uh, or aiming for the golden orrery. So as I, as I mentioned, you have a few ways of getting additional either paper money or golden dice. So here I kind of have a few different variations of that. This top one here is basically spending everything on one day. Uh, so you have one uh, daily goal. Yeah, so basically spending everything on one day. This means you can spend all on that daily special. And this is kind of the distribution of uh, the number of tiles you progress. And again, this blue line here is how many you need if you have the event surprise box. Uh, this is how many you need if you don't have the event surprise box. Uh, then this down here is uh, with 10 daily goals. So you go for the daily goal 10, dies, uh, 10 days. Uh, by doing so, you will have a chance to pick up uh, around three and a half on average uh, free golden dice. Uh, so you will pass the golden dice three to four times while going for these 10 daily goals. Now, the cost for going for 10 daily goals is around uh, 2,500 paper money, apparently, according to this at least. So that means that you will only have uh, 7,500 paper money to spend on that one day where you go all out for a daily special. Uh, but this does mean that you will advance further on the board. Here you can see it pretty much guaranteed that you will get enough if you have the surprise box. If you don't have the surprise box, there is a chance, a relatively good chance that you get it, uh, but still a bigger chance that you don't uh, get enough uh, tiles to get the main building fully leveled. And then finally here, you have uh, an example where you go 21 daily goals, where you get all of those. In the process of doing that, you will pick up uh, seven to eight free golden dice, as I mentioned, by using a dice to get that golden dice. Uh, but by doing that, you will only have, I don't know, a little bit above 4,000 uh, paper money to spend on that one day where you do go all out. So. Basically, you have to decide where you want to be on this spectrum. Do you want to uh, go all out for daily specials? Do you want to play it a little bit safer to go, for example, for a few more daily goals? Uh, basically, how do you want to... What, what do you want to risk? Uh, so that's up to you. Uh, I've given you some tools that you can play around with to hopefully help you figure out what is best for you. Uh, but I think I will end this video here. I've been gone, going on for too long. Uh, I'm still a little, little bit ill, as you might be able to tell, <laughs> a little bit sore in my throat, but hopefully this was clear enough and hopefully you did enjoy this video. Uh, again, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you want to enter the giveaway, leave a comment in the comments with your username, your server, uh, and when you started playing or how long you have been playing uh, Forge of Empires. Alright, before I end this video, I would like to thank my Patreons for supporting me and my content. I would like to thank Homestar, Ford Prefect, Lorden, Rockin' Robin, Kim Cayley, Joshua Clark, Rolf the Eighth, PQ the Goat, Merrick B, Arkler, Hukakant von Count, Jan Fredriksen, Drew the Generous, Filda, Rush, Susan Weiss, Mega Rock, Rocco, Henrik Dari Klerberg, Mattia, Optri the Obsessed, Rath, Kim, and XD. Thank you all very much for your support. Thanks for watching, good luck in the event, and I will see you in the future.